California is known as the Golden State. Now it's also known as a sanctuary state. Governor Jerry Brown just signed the legislation, and here's what we're looking at. Beginning January 1st, state and local officers cannot ask someone about someone's immigration status. They also can't be deputized as immigration agents, and they are not allowed to detain someone for the feds unless they committed a serious or violent crime. The president will be laying out his uh, responsible immigration plan over the next week. And um, I hope that California will uh, push back on their governor's, uh, I think, irresponsible decision moving forward. Law enforcement is divided on the measure. And joining us now to talk about the sanctuary state law is Professor Hadar Aviram, and she specializes in civil rights law and criminal justice at UC Hastings. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. Now, for folks at home who see that this law has been signed, what does it mean for folks in the Bay Area from a practical perspective? So essentially, immigration is a federal matter. It's the federal government that decides who comes in, who goes out, what to do with undocumented immigrants. Mm -hmm. And this is not a matter that municipalities are supposed to enforce. And historically, different municipalities in the United States have really varied in the extent to which they were willing to cooperate with the feds. Mm -hmm. So for example, if we were in Arizona, uh, 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 a very controversial bill passed a few years ago, AB 1070, under which local cops were asking uh, uh, people that were suspected of being undocumented immigrants, essentially racially profiling them, asking them, are you undocumented, asking them for documents, and essentially handing them to the federal authorities. Here in San Francisco, we've had the exact opposite, which is to say the cops have not cooperated with the feds, which they are not actually required to do under law because it is not their job. The Tenth Amendment does not allow the feds to commandeer the states and local authorities to do their own job for them. So essentially what this law does is it's a more... Given the fact that municipalities here have been doing this for a while anyway, this is essentially a declaration. It's more of a symbolic statement on the part of the state. We are not on board with this extremely oppressive and gratuitously cruel policy against immigrants, and we're not going to cooperate with that. So it's going to limit the amount of money that we spend on it. It's going to, to some extent, again, to the extent that this wasn't happening before, and I'm not sure that there is uh, a lot that wasn't happening before, no cooperation with the feds, no money to the feds, and, and refraining from handing people to, to the feds unless mandated to do so under federal law. Now, so I spoke to a member of the assembly, a Republican, at the time that this was being debated, and he said that the reason why there, that these cooperative agreements sprung up between immigration and local authorities was an effort to keep um, immigration agents from being in neighborhoods, from doing raids in, you know, libraries and in, you know, courthouses, that they were sort of partnering with local, uh, with local law enforcement. And he's, you know, sort of ripping that apart and saying now there can be no cooperation or very limited cooperation will send immigration agents back into neighborhoods. And that's what we've seen, um, you know, right now, the sort of statement from the from uh, immigration authorities was we're going to now have to go back to going to neighborhoods and potentially sweeping up, uh, you know, uh, civilians or other non-criminals in, in this act. What do you what do you make of that argument? Well, I, with all due respect, the assembly person, I don't know where he's been living. I've been living here and immigration uh, officials, ICE immigration officials have been raiding places all the time. Like this has not made a lot of difference in terms of where the feds are. It's not that they're going to increase their presence because the local cops aren't going to do their job for them. They've but, been around and they've been doing raids as it is. But they couldn't increase their presence? I mean, isn't there always the chance that they could Theor get, theoretically, get they, theoretically, they could. But again, this is a question. A lot of this is a matter of budgeting. A lot of this is a matter of, you know, how much do we want to spend for things that are essentially gratuitous cruelty with very little impact on our public safety? So uh, so that so that's the question that, that actually comes up here is, uh, to what extent are the feds going to, beyond, again, these sort of symbolic declarations of enmity that we just heard, to what extent are the feds actually going to do something? Another interesting thing that I should point out is that uh, typically what would sort of ping the attention of the feds is if somebody got arrested. Mm -hmm. so, so if the cops would arrest somebody, then their status would eventually come to light once they're booked into jail, and then ICE would be, would be notified. And, uh, and there's the empirical question of to what extent are cops in places that are sanctuary cities, sanctuary municipalities, refraining from arresting people 
that they suspect are undocumented immigrants because they don't want to alert immigration authorities to that possibility. But that doesn't change under the sanctuary state it does, law. It does not. And, and this is why I say the sanctuary state law is more of a symbolic measure given the fact that the vast majority of police, policing here as in everywhere else in the United States is done on the municipal level. Yeah, to be clear, when a person is arrested, they are run through a federal system which then sort of uh, automatically uh, sort of denotes whether or not the person is here illegally. So exactly. And, and cops on the scene of a crime have a lot of discretion on how to handle a particular incident. So a cop might decide to arrest somebody or they might decide to detain them or let them go with a caution or something like that. And, and uh, to the extent that some cops suspect that somebody is an undocumented immigrant, the possible consequences of arresting them might impact the way that they respond to an incident. And is that a good idea? I mean, what does that mean for public safety if police are, are refraining from arresting people they would otherwise bring into custody. Well, we have to keep in mind that a lot of times uh, the vast majority of offenses that people commit obviously are nonviolent, you know, property and drug offenses and things like that, which don't end up landing people in jail. And the consequences of deportation are so much worse than what the person might expect in the criminal justice system that a reasonable cop is going to probably, you know, weigh the odds and decide you know, not to ruin the person's life for something that's, you know, mostly a minor or petty incident because the consequences could be disastrous for that person's family. But for U.S. citizens, they're going to get arrested. Or people, or people who appear to be U.S. citizens again, are going to face arrest. Again, I don't know whether this is the case, and this is something that we should probably, you know, find out in, in the future. Another interesting issue might be, uh, are cops in places that are not sanctuary cities, such as in Arizona, are they deliberately profiling to target people who appear to be undocumented immigrants or people who have, you know, a Hispanic or Latino uh, appearance because they suspect these might be undocumented immigrants because that enables them to cooperate with the feds. So just the interface between the federal and local authorities is so problematic and the federal policy is so scary that this is going to impact how different municipalities treat people in different ways that we can't exactly predict and we have not attempted to measure in an organized way so far. Well, hopefully we will be measuring that going forward. We'll see what impact this has on crime and other issues in the state of California. Professor, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We really appreciate it.